For more than a decade, Walter Reed Bethesda has been deploying staff on a medical readiness training exercise, or MedRet, to the Dominican Republic to provide medical evaluation and surgical treatment to citizens with hand and craniofacial deformities. It's a multifocal mission. Primarily, we're here to, to serve the local children who have congenital differences um, in a way that's convenient for them, which I think we do a very good job. This year, the team was able to perform no-cost corrective surgery for more than 70 patients. But at JTA Bravo, uh, we are like a forward base, so we are uh, ready to support any uh, like disaster relief. So uh, you know we can be ready to be uh, deploying 24 hours or less. MedRets provide opportunities for deployed units to gain readiness experience, as well as medical and surgical skills training for the delivery of medical care in austere conditions. Kind of mission readiness standpoint, uh, I think missions like this are incredibly uh, useful. They're the kind of next closest thing to a uh, combat mission. It's very clear that the skills and the adaptability uh, that's required to make this a successful mission are some of the very same skills uh, uh, that are uh, required to make uh, combat missions successful. So one of the main purposes of uh, exercise is not really the surgical part. The Walter Reed um, staff and you know, all personnel is already trained. The real value of this is that this can be used for any you know, uh, major uh, event. The biggest part is the planning and uh, ordering supplies, logistics, figuring out exactly what you need, how are you going to get it there, and being able to use all of your resources. Planning stages are really important, and if you can plan a trip anywhere in the world with a small crew and execute it nicely, I mean, this is just representative of what we do globally as the military, and we're just doing it as a, a microcosm view of what the military and all three joint forces are capable of. This training exercise also provided an opportunity to pass the skills and knowledge that can only be learned by hands-on training while in surgery. From the experienced Walter Reed Bethesda surgeons and staff to the first-year residents of the Dominican Republic who might not yet have had the prospect of this type of surgery. The way that the mission is set up, the surgeons I've interacted with, the residents I've interacted with see their role mostly as facilitating a successful mission, uh, but there are opportunities to, to uh, learn. Because it's not only beneficial for the patients, but for us, for the staff, the doctors, because we learn and we see how, you know, different, like things we see every day are done differently and maybe right. we can learn a different approach or different treatments. You know, I was able to take uh, one of their junior residents through a kind of entry level uh, case, same level of case that I would take an intern or second year through at Walter Reed. So I was a little nervous at, at the beginning, but once that I got through, it was a little bit better. I took him through that case and I think he enjoyed that and it was a good experience for me uh, to be able to kind of pass on some of the little uh, uh, tips uh, to kind of help his progression as a surgeon. He was like, let me give you some tip. And then we was like, oh my God, I've been doing this wrong the, the, my whole life. I'm actually trying to, to, to use that in this hospital to see how it works here. According to medical teams from both countries, one of the most valuable aspects of this year's mission was working and training as one united team of surgeons, nurses, and doctors. I think uh, there are clearly relationships that have been built over the uh, years, uh, and it's always good to be able to kind of build on those relationships versus, you know, by starting from scratch. We're friends with all of the doctors that we work with, and um, it's part of what makes the mission a success and makes us communicate well in between missions and have good follow-up. This is our uh, spirit leader uh, who just entered. No. I, I think the uh, I think the camaraderie is great. I think anytime you, you get a, uh, get an opportunity to kind of interact with people outside of a clinical setting or outside of a work setting, I think can only, can only help. Um, one of the things that's uh, I've kind of remarked on is that there there are times where you have to wait, or you have to endure some sort of mild hardship, and I think that only serves to bring people together. Dominicans are very welcoming, um, and even though we have a number of people that have never 
been on one of these over, overseas medical missions, they've made us feel very welcome. And, and in return, I think uh, uh, we've been much better able to work with them as an integrated medical team. So we're delivering very good medical care based on, on their, their very kind hospitality. Maxillofacial surgery is life changing for these kids. They'd otherwise, um, in some communities, might be ostracized. We, we allow them to reintegrate into a, a, a normal social pattern in their, in their communities. Important work. You feel that you're helping somebody, you, you're making, a, you know, a change in a life, not only of the patient, but of, of uh, their relatives. So I think that's what, you know, stands more and that we appreciate all the people that have come here to help. They just feel a bond with everyone on the team, even if we're new to them, and it's really neat. So I think the word spreads. They all kind of know the name Walter Reed, and, and it's, a, it's just really endearing. I think that's a, a big success, and if we can get future collaborations and have um, even more partnership with the Dominican Republic and our colleagues here, that would be great. For the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center, a Petty Officer, Christopher Kruge.